Oh man, that boy done lost his mind. Uh, Teofimo Lopez, I'm not sure what's going on exactly with him, but um, he's super, super feeling himself lately. Like super feeling himself lately. Um, he's talking about, I mean, when it pertains to Devin Haney, he's talking about him being someone that he's not gonna you know, fight for a while. Um, he's talking about from now on making $5 million a fight which I'm not sure exactly how that's going to happen just due to the fact that, you know, even Terrence Crawford isn't making $5 million a year. And um, uh, Terrence Crawford is someone that's bringing in, uh, before everything hit, he's someone that was bringing in a substantial amount when it came to gates or fights. That was the number one. And then number two, he's doing bigger numbers than any, everybody substantially. You know, it doesn't matter who, you know, everybody that's on top rank side, he's the king when it comes to viewership, period, hands down. It's not even close, especially on a consistent basis. He's the man, you know, on top rank, period, regardless what Bob Arum or whoever likes to say. If it's true that he's, quote, losing money on TOF, on, on, on Terrence Crawford, he's losing money on everybody, especially on people like um, Lomachenko with the amount of money that he pays Lomachenko, you know, but that to the side. So... You know, for whatever reason, he has this belief that he's going to make $5 million a year and somehow make $5 million a fight without fighting the top tier guys. I'm not sure how that exactly that works. Um, but if he can get it, you know, thumbs up, definitely. You know what I mean? Get your money if somehow you have something that's worked out where you actually can do that, you know. But um, the biggest thing, you know, that's been coming out of his camp is that, you know, he wants to, quote, fight Javante Tank Davis. But he's saying that Javante Tank Davis, um, he needs to come to the table um, and, and be realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, he needs to come to the table and, and quote, not price himself out. You know what I mean? It's like, what exactly does Javante Tank Davis bring to the table, period? What do you bring here? Okay? What, you know, what are you, you know, capable of bringing me? As if, you know, T.O. is just this big, huge superstar or something like that. The man did his thing against Lomachenko. Um, he did his thing in his previous fight as well. You know what I mean? He holds three of the belts. Um, he's, you know, one of the, the, the top guys out there right now. And you got to, you know, give him nothing but respect and, and commend what he's done, especially in the last 24 months. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, you can't come around and scream about how you're the A-side when it comes to somebody like a Javante Tank Davis. There's levels to this, as they say. And when it comes to someone like Javante Tank Davis, he's on a different level. And I understand some people might be like, hey, well, he has three belts. He has three belts. He beat Lomachenko. Tank with him fight Lomachenko and those things of that nature. All that stuff don't mean ish, period. If Floyd Mayweather decided to come back out of retirement and fight a real fight, and he was fighting, let's say he was fighting Earl Spence, and Earl Spence was undisputed at that time, had four belts. It wouldn't mean ish. Earl Spence would still be the B side. Forget the B side. Earl Spence would still be the C side. Because at the end of the day, he brings in the funds. You know, Floyd Mayweather brings in the money. What, what you bring to the table financially, money-wise, and what's going to detail, you know, where you are in negotiations, period. That's it, period. And when you look at somebody like a Javante Dank Davis, this is someone that, you know, sold big, you know, was a big gates in Los Angeles, sold big gates in Atlanta, as we also against Gamboa, sold big gates in um, Baltimore, and just did 10,000 people in Texas, you know, with expensive ass tickets. You know what I mean? Expensive ass tickets. And still did that in a pay per view that did 250,000 out. 250,000 pay per views. 250 to 300,000 pay per views at was it $75 a pop? That's a lot. Lomachenko just fought, you know, I mean, I mean what's it called? Tio just fought Lomachenko. Um, it pretty much, you know, closed the arena. And they didn't think that fight was worth moving, you know, to a place to like Texas where you could have a crowd. And get a crowd for that fight. They didn't believe it was financially worth making that move. For Tank, they did. They believed that was you know worth it for Tank. And Tank got that gate. You're you're talking night and day when you're talking about finances. Forget forget about Tank. When all the pay views and the gates and everything comes in, 
Leo Santa Cruz is going to make more money off that fight than Lomachenko and Teofimo made combined for their fight. That's what's going to happen in that particular situation. He is going to make more than that dude made. That's the level that Tank is on. So just imagine what Tank is making off that fight. Just imagine what Tank is making off that fight. We are literally talking night and day. You know, so all this, you know, talk about him being the A side. He said he doesn't care what Floyd Mayweather, anybody says that he's the A side. Supposedly. And I'll tell you this, it doesn't matter. I don't know who Tank Javante Tank Davis is, gonna, is fighting next. I honestly don't know. I'm not sure who that person is going to be. But um, if you're capable of having a gate, he's going to have a gate. You know, and if he's on Showtime, he's doing 700, 800,000 plus on Showtime. If they put him up on Fox, like they're saying they possibly might do, he's going to do 2 million, 2 million plus, regardless of who he fights. It doesn't have to be a him versus like a Lomachenko type of level fight. He doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be that in order for him to do, in, in order for him to do viewerships. He's going to bring in viewerships, period. That's the level he's on. I'm not sure who Teal's going to fight next. Then after that, he can go do a pay-per-view with someone else. If he fought Teofimo Lopez, that's a pay-per-view. Lomachenko just lost a fight. He could fight Lomachenko right now at 130 pounds. It would still be pay-per-view. And it would still make a killing off that fight. You know, he could fight a you know, he could fight a Gary Rosa Jr. He could fight a Diaz. Diaz is a is an IBF champion. Okay, he could go fight Diaz for the uh, unification of his belt of the WBA and the IBF on pay-per-view. It's gonna make money. It just is. That's the level that Tank is on. All right? If somehow he could pull Bert Schelt and let Bert, and top rank with Landon fight Bert Schelt, which they're not going to do, that would make money in that unification. You know? There's levels, as they say. So I'm not sure why this man is feeling himself, but we all know Mayweather Promotions made it very clear. When it comes to Tank, he's going to be the A-side over everybody. And the numbers show that that's the case. And they're going to be in full control of everything. That means you show up and you fight. Yeah, we're going to give you your little portion of the gate. We'll give you your money up front, everything you're supposed to get paid. We'll make sure you're good. But your tail is basically just coming there. This ain't going to be no joint thing where multiple two people do things together. It's going to be a thing where they have full control of that event. you know. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because like I've said before, they have different plans. Matchroom has plans for Devin. They're not letting Devin fight Teal. They're not letting Devin fight Tank. They got to hold the, the matchroom treatment, how they do things. He's going to follow that same blueprint when it comes to him, regardless of what they say. When it comes to, that's why that Gary Russell fight didn't happen. When it comes to Tank, they got their plans and they're set up when it pertains to him as well. I'm not sure who they're fighting at, but whatever they do, they're making sure they're in full control. When it comes to Teofimo Lopez, they're talking about him fighting in Australia against some dude in Australia. So he's going to probably do that or fight a Lomachenko. Or he's going to go to 140 pounds and fight the belt holders over there. But whatever it happens with him, they're going to be looking at that guy long term. They're looking at what they can do with him over the next 5, 10 years. Which means they're not putting him in any kind of fight where they think that he might lose. Unless the person that he's fighting, they have full control over. So since they don't have full control over Devin Haney. Since they don't have full control over, over Javante Tank Davis. Since they don't have those two guys that could beat him. Because of that, they're not going to do those fights. They're going to set up things in-house or against other guys that they believe that he can beat, where they can put options on that particular guy, um, a la Jeff Horn, and move in that direction. That's what they're going to do. Because when it comes to top rank, they play the long game. They don't play that short-ish. They don't care if people are like, they, they can make $10 million, $12 million off this fight. They don't look at it like that. Like, yeah, we can make $12 million off that fight, but if he loses or he gets hurt, he gets knocked out, then what after that? What's his value going to be after that? Or we can make that $10 million off the next four fights. And after the next four fights, we can do another 10 fights and make $40, $50 million. So instead of this little-ass freaking $10 million, we can end up making $60, $70 million off this boy instead. That's one of the reasons why Manny Packer versus uh, Floyd Mayweather didn't happen. People are like, oh, they lost all this money. Top rank didn't lose no money. Think about all the fights that they did in the, between that time. The money they would have made off the Mayweather fight, that was probably like three fights. There probably was three fights of theirs. But they went past that. They made 
uh, ish they made that money that they would have made off him in three fights made a killing off other bouts then after that did the mayweather fight and still made money off of that that's how they look at it you know that's how they do things and if he if they get he gets into a space where he might lose they're gonna make sure they put him in there against somebody of their own so then they can benefit off that loss not somebody else that's how they do things and that's why i also say you're not seeing earl spence versus terence crawford it's not happening so forget about it something fight that's not gonna happen but you know 2020 was crazy 2021's coming up and it's gonna things are gonna be bumped up to another level it's gonna be a crazy year just like 2020 you know what I mean? And we'll just see what happens. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.